to reality. African Americans, for the resurgence of black awareness and pride, black men and women face new problems, not only in relation to white society, but to each other in a black society. Recently, there has been a stream of articles on this subject, and the Chicago Daily Defender, America's largest black newspaper, began a series some weeks ago on the emergence of the new black woman. Betty Washington, reporter for the paper, surveyed the Chicago scene to report on how black men and women believe the revolution in racial pride will affect them and their families before the sociologists and experts tell us how we are supposed to react. As a reporter for the Chicago Daily Defender and as a black woman married to a black man, I become deeply aware of the effects of this new black revolution on the relationship between black man and black woman. I see it among my own friends and I also see it in my home. But the most revealing and the most vocal statements about what the new black man expects from the new black woman came when I met with a group of young unmarried friends one Saturday afternoon. I think that what's happening in America as far as black men and black women is concerned is that there's a revolution within a revolution. We are fighting our own woman. Our woman will not allow us to emerge as black men. No. But our black women, who has been put in this role of aiding white America, white structure, and castrating the black male, has continued doing this. She cannot live with us. It's not that we can't live with her. Are you blaming us? Are you saying that it's our fault that this happened? No, I'm not blaming black America women. I just said that I'm blaming the system. They are victims of the system, like the black male. Well, why do you say that we are castrating you. You say that you want to be the leaders. Okay, well, what about the black professional woman? Are you saying that there should be no black professional woman? Are you trying to deny black women the right to be creative, the right to function? We're not asking for you to take a back seat. We're said. saying that you have got to be astute enough and can view the situation well enough where you just automatically know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that aggressive thing, this is the thing that the young black man today is not gonna tolerate. My old man tolerated because he was his old man tolerated. It came up for years and years and years. But today, the young black man is not gonna take it. He's gonna be out there as a leader. White America has used black women to keep the black male in his place. And you're still aiding him by saying, well, we are qualified. We want to work. We can help. OK, how are you going to reprogram men so that they don't let us take over what's supposed to be their responsibility? And men that I have had dealings with, they are perfectly willing to sit back and let us do anything we want to. I I don't think you have to reprogram men. I think you have to reprogram women. No, you have to reprogram no, no. the man so that he will forcefully no. take what belongs to him because you know women, as long as okay. we can get, we're going to get. And it's, 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 it's part of our being. We're going to do anything to you that you let us, okay. whether we want to or not. You don't want to live on the level of income that I can afford you in love. Me, on the basis of that, you want to always be aspiring to have all those things that's a part of the great middle-class white American society. And, and because I can't deliver these things to you, you say that you are not a man. I don't measure a man by how much money he can bring home. I measure a man by how he treats me. Whether when I'm tired and I'm sick and I'm scared, he's there. For these women, the men are there. But with the feeling of racial pride has come new conflicts and new problems. Across America, they meet to discuss what black awareness means to their families and to them as black women of today. You know, there have been a lot of myths created about the black family. We all recognize that. And one of the most pernicious myths is the myth of the black matriarch. 
you know, and this whole concept. And I think this is one of the reasons that the black community reacted so negatively to the Moynihan report, because we know that that's not true. It was not like The black that. woman has not been a matriarch in the mm -hmm. sense that it has been defined thus far. And thank God research, and I hope black research, is being done now uh, to, to reverse that kind of thing. In fact, the black woman has been a woman at the head of a household, not by choice, but by necessity. And yeah, more and design, often, or, that's right, and more right often than design. not, she is not a strong, <laughs> matriarchal, aggressive, domineering figure. She is a woman in search of a man. But this story has not been told. The prejudice society created what we have now. So that's what we were. Okay, we have a revolution going on. Well, we're part of the revolution. We're in right. an evolution. I think the revolution is to come down. Yeah, it's to come well, this thing, this thing we keep thing. often the word revolution around lightly. Lightly. Actress Val Ward performs the works of our black poets and dramatists. For her, black awareness is not revolutionary, but the very foundation of her marriage. Val's husband... Francis Ward talks of the struggles of the black family in the past and the obstacles that lie ahead. Uh, it's extremely important for black history and culture to be transmitted from generation to generation. And the best way, the most effective way that this has always been done is through the family acting as the primary unit of social organization. And I think one reason why it has not been done with black people is because of the destruction done to our family life. So this certainly has to be one function of the black marriage to begin the re to reemphasize and to pick up the thread of Afro-American history and culture that has been left off generations ago when um, Africans were bought, sold into slavery, when the family unit was purposely destroyed. Part of the, the, the obligation of, of being black is to make absolutely certain that whoever has any kind of control or jurisdiction over your kid you know is not bringing him into conflict with the kinds of things we teach we, we, we try to install in them here in the home most um middle class homes quote middle class homes like i don't even get caught up in that bag you go into will have some copy of um anybody any white artist i don't even have to name anybody um instead of the works of black artists i think it starts especially that identity part, the books, the kinds of books. All of these things start in the home rather than complaining about them being in the schools at this point. Unless we're absolutely certain of how that teacher is handling them, then we may have to assume that whole responsibility. We may have to pull them out of school ourselves, you know, and do the, all the educating ourselves. Say, for instance, when they say to my child to draw, uh, last year Rhonda uh, painted Abraham Lincoln Brown and she was put in the corner, you know. We had to go up to the school and deal with that. They must be respectable to their peers in school. And what we do, we handle that. We don't say, you jump up, you curse that teacher out, or you say it doesn't exist. But they see us at that school knocking on the door. You have to be in there. Either we're going to control you know, their minds here, or at least yeah. give them the choice. A lot of this is new to us, and a lot of these things we're grappling with, and we don't want to give anybody the impression that we have the answer to everything. Not only that, no, let me cut you I off know. again. You know, people go around talking about, hey, we really don't have time to hate because, you know, it goose up the bag. We're loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. This might bring around a lot of other different things. To be black means to love. It's got nothing to do with having to hate anybody. It Listen. does determine, though, Francis, and has nothing to do with hate again. It's love that we might have to do, have to do certain things to protect that love. It may bring us into conflict with somebody. Yeah. necessary to protect that love. Finally, I asked Francis about the standards of today's black man as compared with those of 20 years ago. ...standards which white society had projected. I think these standards were that he had to become successful according to the white mode. He had to get a good job, he had to buy a good car, he had to move to the suburbs. He had to rear a good family that went to church every Sunday that did everything that the typical good American family was supposed to do. And I don't think the black man necessarily is addicted to that notion. I think he sees the falsity of it. I think he sees the total hypocrisy of it. I think he wants to rear a tightly knit family, but not for the purposes that white society says. Uh, he doesn't want to rear a, a, a family for any sham purposes just to ful fulfill some false ethic but he wants to rear a good family in order to 
have his children strong, reared in his own image perhaps, and to transmit, most importantly, to transmit the values which he is learning uh, to his children and to try to ensure as best he can that his children will transmit those same values to their children and, you know, have the, uh, the same transmission repeated from generation to generation. Listen to me. I am a woman. Black, that is. And there is but one thing which brings tears to my eyes. And that is to hear man, woman, or child stand up with strength and say, I'm proud. I'm black. And that's beautiful. I think that what's happening in America as far as black men, black women is concerned is that there's a revolution within a revolution. We are fighting our own woman. Our woman will not allow us to emerge as black men. No. But our black women, who has been put in this role of aiding white America, white structure, and castrating the black male, has continued doing this. She cannot live with us. It's not that we can't live with her. Are you blaming us? You hear, you hear that female say, are you blaming us? She sounds like Cynthia G. But right here she said, are you blaming us? Well, that's projection. That's deflection. The first thing that female wants to make clear is, well, if it isn't us, who do you think it could be? This is why they'll shut you down and they won't, they won't allow you to speak or they don't want to hear a thing you're saying because the only thing they're trying to say is, is they know what you're saying to be truthful. They know what you're saying to be fact. They just want to know, are you going to blame them, attack them, hinder them, or stop them? That's the only reason why the female responds, are you blaming me? Because if you do tell her that you are blaming her, then now you're going to have to fight. Or you reveal your hand. But if you tell her that I know, if you speak in a manner that says, I see a problem, I just don't know what it is, then that tells her, she has a little bit more time for the most part to keep you in your place but if you tell her you see what she's doing then she'll get rid of you quick fast in a hurry whether it's a relationship whether it's a position whether it's um job related or whether it's intimately her job is to make sure that you don't see the attack coming directly that is her job to, to make sure you don't see it's coming directly she wants to attack you indirectly. Are you blaming us? Are you saying that it's our fault that this happened? No, I'm not blaming black America women. I just said that I'm blaming the system. They are victims of the system like the black male. Well, why do you say that we are castrating you? You say that you want to be the leaders. Okay, well, what about the black professional woman? Are you saying that there should be no black professional woman? Another form of deflection. Just because someone else is a leader doesn't mean someone else can't be a professional. If black men are a leader of a football team, it doesn't mean that black women can't play. If a black man is the owner of a baseball team, it doesn't mean that you can't have a female head coach. That's a form of deflection. So are you saying if in order for you to be a leader, I can't be a professional woman? That makes no sense. Both of us have a job to do. And before we get in that ground, these are the things that we must do before our time runs out. So you can be a black professional woman, but we're not telling you that we want to be the leader of you in a workplace. We're not telling you we want to be the leader of you at the supermarket. What we're telling you is in order to get our offspring, the next generation, further on down the road, more successful, I'm, I'm eating grapes, more successfully. You have to allow us to lead, not necessarily let us lead, allow us to lead or, or put us in that leadership position. Well, why you got to use all these terms? 
You got to use all these terms because understand, by nature, I am the leader. By nature. But black women and many other women have devised a plan that says they don't want no man leading them over them in charge of them. That's the plan that they devised. However, they use the system of racism, white supremacy to perpetuate it. They use the system of racism, white supremacy to bring it about. The white man is not governing the black woman to such an extent as he is governing the black man. So the black woman has a little bit more autonomy, a little bit more freedom, a little bit more upward mobility as compared to her natural running mate. So if we were to really, really assume leadership position, we would really have to get rid of the white boy. Because as long as he's on the map, as long as he's a functioning piece, our women are going to go to him and say, I don't like what he's doing. I don't like how he's talking. I don't like what he's saying. Help me get rid of him. That's what our women are doing, low-key or otherwise, covert or otherwise. That's what they're doing. This is why the man is expressing, you got to get out of the way. We're not telling you what you can't do or can do. We're just saying when we get into that position, don't, don't fight us so much. It's for the greater good of our offspring. It's for the greater good of our children. Not whether or not you want to be a professional woman. You could be a professional woman, but when you come across that threshold of the house, you got to pipe that down. When you come back into the threshold of this house, you got to simmer that down. Talking to me ain't the same as talking to your subordinates at work. Not that I'm not a subordinate, but me, I don't want to be spoken to like that by anybody. I only tolerate it because it's job related. But if it ain't job related, I sure don't want it to be romantic. It has nothing to do with whether or not if you're a professional or non-professional. Gaslighting. Deflection. Well, what about the black professional woman? Are you saying that there should be no black professional woman? Are you trying to deny black women the right to be creative, the right to function? We're not asking for you to take a back seat. We're said. saying that you have got to be astute enough and can view the situation well enough where you just automatically know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that aggressive thing, this is the thing that the young black man today is not gonna tolerate. My old man tolerated because he was his old man tolerated. It came up for years and years and years. But today, the young black man is not gonna take it. He's gonna be out there as a lead. I need y'all to look at that woman's face. Look at the smirk. Look at the grin. Look at her behavior. She is literally um, projecting imagery that says, I don't care what y'all are saying. As long as the white man allows me to do whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it. And having this conversation with you know nothings is a waste of time. That's envy. That's hate. That she's projecting um, like a, for, a certain form of sarcasm. Like she could care less. Like she don't mind having the banter. But nothing positive or nothing good is going to come from this conversation. In her mind, it's a waste of time. Look at her smirk. You really think I care, don't you? You really think that I'm going to change the way I think and the way I behave, don't you? Nigga, if you only knew. Black women to keep the black male in his place. And you're still aiding him by saying, well, we are qualified. We want to work. We can help. Okay, how are you going to reprogram men so that they don't let us take over? What's more deflection. More it ain't my fault. How are you going to reprogram men so that they won't let us? Not how can we improve on it ourselves so we don't get scared, so we don't become nervous, so we don't think that just because the white man is giving us the opportunity 
that that we are better than our man, even, even though the white man is giving it to us, that we earned it. Let's not worry about what we're doing. Let's worry about how we can reprogram the men so they don't let us. What does that sound like? That sounds like a fight. You are speaking in a manner that says, well, I ain't going to change my ways. And if the men let me get away with it, I'm going to get away with it. That's what that sounds like. But if the men won't let me get away with it, I might not try to get away with it because the men won't let me get away with it. However, we understand that she will move on from one man to another man to another man to another man. She will move on to whoever will allow her to get away with her, her mission objective. Even if she means she had to stay alone and live by herself, get a dog, die alone. That's the statement that she's making. This is not white supremacy. You guys better understand why they're using white supremacy, but this isn't white supremacy. This is the nature of women. How are you going to reprogram men so that they don't let us take over what's supposed to be their responsibility? And men that I have had dealings with, they are perfectly willing to sit back and let us do anything we want to. Hi. That right there is a true statement. That is not a fabricated statement. There has always been a sector or a group of males that do not want the job. There has always been a sector or group of males that would rather lay up under a woman or female or even a man and let them do all the heavy lifting. A personality type like hers, female, she would look for the man that would allow her to do whatever she wants to do. If Billy D. Williams came on the scene, or Cole Jack, who loves you, baby. If a dominant male came on the scene and approached her and said whatever he needed to say to try to persuade her to bet on him, she would say no. She would like the way he looks. She would like the way he sounds, baritone, tone of voice. She would like his masculinity. She would like it at the same time she would say, no, I don't want that. So she would fetishize it like it, but she wouldn't want it as part of a per permanent staple. Someone to come home to on a nightly basis. She wouldn't, that's where she draws the line. She'll have sex with him, but she's not going to make him a permanent fixture in her life. Because then that means she would have to follow his rules, regulations, system, structure, and order. And men that I have had dealings with, they are perfectly willing to sit back and let us do anything we want to. I, I don't think that you have to reprogram men. I think you have to reprogram women. No, you have to reprogram no, no. the man so that he will forcefully no. take what belongs to him because you know women as long as okay. we can get we gonna get and it's 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 part of our being. We're going to do anything to you that you let us, okay. whether we want to or not. Now, this is the disingenuous part of her stance. Forcefully take. How are, you, how are black men going to forcefully take jobs when they're denying them the jobs? In 2023, 2022, you've seen an influx of immigrants enter into this country. You've seen a high unemployment rate for black males, and you've seen immigrants, they skyrocket these immigrants to the top tier positions. How are you going to forcefully take jobs as a collective? Not as an individual, not as a small sector, as a collective. This is what I'm explaining when I tell you guys, listen to the behavior patterns, talking points. They're saying one thing, but they're not really meaning what they're saying. They just want to be argumentative, cantankerous. In order for us to take from you, that means we have to do it by force. So what type of force does she or did she or do the women of today think is appropriate in order for the men to function 
in a system to where they have to take from their women, their natural running mate, versus be given from their natural running mate. If we take it, blood must be shed. If you give it, then we can work with it and incorporate you in it. But if we take it, you're going to fight. And if you fight, then that means I'm going to have to go one notch up. And if I go one notch up and it's not sufficient, then you're going to go one notch up. If you go one notch up to match my one notch up, then I'm going to have to go another notch up. And if it's not efficient, then you're going to go one notch up. You're going to keep going up until I actually have to deliver a death blow to you get to, to for you to understand this can't play this can't be played the way you want to play it. We're not supposed to take it from you. You're supposed to be a woman enough to know that you it ain't yours. You're supposed to be woman enough to know this isn't yours and it is being given to you. Not that you're taking it, but it is being given to you. And since it is being given to you, the proper thing would be to manage it properly. Don't use it as a weapon. Don't use it as a, 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 a stay in your place, nigga, stay in your place, boy, so to speak. Use it as it's a proper, pro, use, it as, uh, uh, use it as it's properly intended. You go out there, you make the money because, you know, you're less of a threat. When you're coming back across that threshold, you don't dangle it over my head and use it as a weapon to keep me in my place. And you don't tell me what I can and cannot do. You don't try to effeminize me. You don't try to emasculate me. You use it as a tool. Let's get these kids to the next level. You use it as a tool. Let's get out of this particular neighborhood and get in a more safer neighborhood. But what women like to do is they like to dangle it over men's heads. And when they dangle it over men's heads, they're trying to effeminately emasculate the man so that the man, for the most part, will never rear up or buck up against the system. Well, when that happens, the inevitable happens. Either the system is going to keep on adding more pressure because it doesn't have a, a system or it doesn't have a counter agent or counter anything to stop it or... That man becomes so, so, so angry and agitated that he's feeling attacked from all levels. He lashes out at any and everything in his proximity. Yes, there are some men that bow and take it. But when you add numbers to everything, you're going to realize more men lash out than men that sit there and take it. And yes, our women are comfortable with the men that lash out. Because for them, that means that they care. And she loves to feel needy. So she'll fall back and try to take care of them for a certain amount of time. But then she's going to show her fangs again. And as men, you can't play that game that she's playing. You have to play a different game. You know she's using her money as, a le as leverage over you. You already know that. So as man, you must be trying to you must be always striving to get your own money, not to leave her, not to betray her, not to say na na da boo boo, but so that she doesn't have that power dynamic, that leverage over you. I don't think you have to reprogram men. I think you have to reprogram women. No, you have to reprogram the man so that he will forcefully no. take what belongs to him because you know women as long as okay. we can get we gonna get and it's 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 part of our being okay. we're going to do anything to you that you let us okay. whether we want to or not you don't want to live on the level of income that i can afford you in love me on the basis of that you want to, to always be inspired to have all those things that's a part of the great middle class white american society and and because i can't deliver these things to you you say that you are not a man i don't measure a man by how much money he can bring home i measure a man by how he treats me whether when i'm tired and i'm sick and I'm scared, he's there. I don't measure a man by how much money he can bring home. I measure a man by how he treats me. Whether when I'm tired and I'm sick and I'm scared, he's there. I don't measure a man by how much money he can bring home. I measure a man by how he treats me. Whether when I'm tired and I'm sick 
and I'm scared. He's there. When a female says, I do not measure a man based on his money. I measure him based on whether or not if he's there. When a female says that, as a middle-aged man, what I've come to learn is that is a true statement. It's not a good statement. It's not something that can be sustained long-term. It is a true statement. That female who says, I don't measure a man based on his money, ultimately is like a black widow. Um, in today's term, the term may have been around for a long term, but you guys are now starting to hear the word narcissistic, narcissist. Let me give you guys the definition of the word narcissist so that you guys can get a better understanding. Narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder is a mental health condition in which people have an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. They need and seek too much attention and want people to admire them. People with this disorder may lack the ability to understand or care about the feelings of others. But behind this mask of extreme confidence, they are not sure of their own worth and are easily upset by the slightest criticism. 10 Signs of a Narcissist What are Narcissist Signs? 10 Signs 1. They expect to be admired. Narcissists don't just want to be admired. They expect to be admired. Compliments don't just make them feel good. They also fuel them. If a narcissist isn't being show, showered with praise, they can become agitated. Their existence is implied to be some sort of immaculate gift others must recognize. They expect to be admired. They exaggerate their life. To give narcissists some credit, they, they're excellent dramatics. And they can turn the most mundane details of their lives into the most outrageous, unbelievable stories. This is often too good to be true because they're actually lies. They exaggerate their lives. They believe they are superior. Confidence is a quality someone should strive towards. However, there is a difference between having faith in yourself and knowing your strengths and believing you are number one at everything. They believe they are superior. They take advantage of others and lack empathy. Narcissists are a danger to others as well as themselves. Getting to know a narcissist can be difficult as they take advantage of others and lack empathy. They take advantage of others and lack empathy. They live in a fantasy world. To put it simply, many individuals who have narcissistic tendencies or have been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder are typically delusional and choose to live in their own fantasy world rather than in reality. Since real life does not support their grandiose view of themselves, this fantasy world of theirs tends to resolve around distortion of the truth, self-depiction, and magical things as they believe in these self-glorifying illusions they have about themselves involving success, wealth, power, attractiveness, intelligence, and love that makes them feel in control and special. <clears throat> they live in a fantasy world, demeans, intimidates, and bullies others. When a narcissist feels threatened, such as when their views about themselves, others, and the world do not match their made-up fantasies, or they encounter someone who appears to have a quality they lack such as real confidence and popularity. They tend to demean and bully the other person. They, de they demean, intimidate, and bullies others. The need to be controlling. Considering narcissists tend to be continually disappointed when life unfolds un imperfectly and not 
the way they wanted it to, they want to do as much as possible to control any situation life throws at them and mold it to their liking. Not only do narcissists want to be controlled, but they tend to demand to be in control of things as their strong sense of entitlement makes it appear to be a logical to be logical that they should be in control of everything and everyone around them. They strive for perfection. In relationship to their controlling personality, a narcissist often has an extremely high need and expectation for everything in their life, from work to people to be perfect. They believe they should be perfect in all aspects as a result of this. As a result of these high expectations, they want those in their lives to be perfect and events should happen as expected with life perfectly unfolding for them. They strive for perfection. They lack accountability and blame others. A classic sign of a narcissist or narcissism and probably one of the most difficult to deal with is a narcissist lack of accountability and how they blame others for their problems or faults. Although a narcissist generally wants to be in control, ironically, they never want the responsibility that comes with this role. The results and consequences of their actions, unless, of course, everything goes their way. However, when things do not go according to their plan, they feel criticized. A narcissist will place the responsibility and blame on others who are involved as it always has to be someone else's fault. They lack the accountability and blame others. Well, as you go on with psychology and understanding people and, and, and people personality traits, you also understand that within people's personality traits, there's a, there's a plethora or slew of other characteristics that go with inside of it, right? So even though you may be a narcissist, you also have to have an understanding that your environment shapes you differently. So even though I only read off those 10, there are other factors that go in it as well that I may not have mentioned that I do need more study, that I do need more understanding. The reason why I'm saying narcissist and being in control and trying to associate it to when women say they don't judge a man based on their money. They, they judge a man based on what that man can do for them in an emotional sense is because I'm trying to show you guys how to connect the dots with the least amount of words. In order for you to connect the dots with the least amount of words, you have to go somewhere and get the most amount of words. That way, when you step back in that arena, you can understand people's places, things talking points, behavior patterns. Females in general do not really care about a man's money. <clears throat> it's the same thing as a, 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 a man's um, sexual organ size. Females in general do not care about a man's sexual organ size. What they fundamentally care about across the board is time, attention to detail, and um, sensuality. This is why they call it the motion of the ocean. If you are well endowed, it's, it, it, it's okay. But now the women are saying they don't really care for it being all that big. So I say to you guys, a lot of these things are pseudo. Because if something else is more powerful that comes into the environment, all of what we know goes right out the window. Because whatever's more powerful is going to change the rules. And people are going to acquiesce to the rules. Mm, that don't work, so got to change. Same thing with being in the military. If you're in the military, combat rules, military rules, don't always apply to civilians. Civilians are lazy. Civilians are lazy. Civilians don't un, don't don't respect and appreciate time. Civilians don't approach, don't respect whether or not if something is done thoroughly the first time around. We as civilians, as civilians, we're a little lackadaisical on a lot of things. Whereas in the military, 
They teach you punctuation and they teach you accuracy. They teach you accountability. So when you're in that world of high stakes, the stakes is high, the game is different. Same thing with being locked up in prison or jail. Those rules are different because the stakes are high. So when the stakes are high, your approach to things is far different, far, far, far different. And you pretty much no play. This is a no fly zone. This is a no play zone. So I'm saying all these things to try to get you guys to understand the fundamentals. They don't really care about the things that they project that they care about. They're always trying to sell you the car, the POS car, the lemon at its highest value that they can get. They know that car is $800, but they're going to detail it. They're going to clean it up. They're going to shine it up. They're going to armor all the tires. Now, when you look at it, it went from eight to a thousand. If you look at it on the wrong day, it's going to go from eight hundred to fifteen hundred. That is their goal. Their goal is to sell it to the highest bidder at all costs at all times. So when the female, any female or, or any female say they don't really care about a man's money or they don't judge a man by his money, that is a true statement. However, now you have to have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to say which female doesn't care about a man's money. Because it's not a one-size-fits-all. Money is a standard. Money is a tool. Money is like a key. And yes, money is not the most important thing on the, in, on the, in the world. However, it's what it allows people. And for the most part, it's power. The power to come and go as you please. The power to get out of trouble. The power to get into some trouble. It's power. The power to put food on your table. The power to put gas in your car. The power to put air in your tire. The power to get your hair done. It's power. So if she says she doesn't care about a man's money, she's making a true statement. But you need to understand which type of female is saying, I don't care about his money. That is a female that says, I want to control you through the money. This is why you're hearing this female talking about, but when are you going to get the men to not allow us to run over them? Because as long as those women go get that money, then those women are going to select men that they can run over. Pookies and Ray Rays, Mike Mikes, John Johns, June Bucks, and I am a June Buck. To those who don't know, my biological name, my government name, I'm a junior. So when I was a baby, I was considered a junior. I'm a June bug. Not that I was born in June. I'm a June bug. Mike Mike, Pookie, Ray Ray, Tay Tay. I'm, I'm a Pookie and a Ray Ray. Well, why am I up here telling you these things and trying to get any potential Pookie and Ray Ray this to get them to stop being a Pookie and Ray Ray. We are all cut from the same cloth. We know how we became a Pookie and Ray Ray. We know why we are a Pookie and a Ray Ray. And we know why we are set to remain a Pookie and Ray Ray. We are your warrior class. We fight. When we are in an environment and people are bumping at the gums, People are running their mouths and a certain amount of time goes by. The only answer we know as Pookies and Ray Rays is to slap them. That's the answer that we know works all of the time. So when we come to other problems, we address other problems the same way. I don't want to go back and forth. I want to get straight to the problem and I want to finish this. I don't want to spend $5,000 to fix this problem and then go back to the doctor's office and then have to do it all over again. Uh-uh. We want one shot. That way we can move on to the rest of our life. I don't want to put four tires on this car and then in three weeks I went somewhere and got some used tires because my money was funny. So I went ahead and bought four used tires at a used tire repair shop. And then four weeks, three months later, I got to go get brand new tires or new set of used tires because the tires that I got were El Cheapos and they weren't, they were not meant to last long. They were only meant just to get me out of that predicament. 
So as Pookies and Rayways, just like we assess that bump in the gums and running your mouth, we assess everything else the same way. One time, fix it. Anything else, keep it to yourself. So this is why I say certain things to certain males. I don't want to do all that back and forth talking. Let's get it. The problem with males is, is the older you get, the bigger you get. You start working out. You go to lock up. You're in a different arena. You get specialty training. You get all these things. So now you can't run up to any male and just smack them in the mouth. You can't. Now you got to be a little bit more strategic. And as you get older, you'll realize that certain things that you do, even if it's the right thing, you get penalized for it. And then as you get older, you get tired of sitting on that couch. As you get older, you get tired of them waving that wand of economics or money over you. Even though she doesn't mind, she really doesn't mind. Listen to my words. The female doesn't mind. The problem is. You as a man, you cannot stay there. Because when your kids come around, they're going to see that you're weak. Then they're not going to have any they're not going to have any respect for you. When your kids come around, they're going to realize that mommy run the show. They're not going to have any respect for you and they they may even disrespect you in public. It's going to go against you. So, I'm giving you all these examples and I'm trying to get you guys to understand why women prefer to be in charge women are more likely to be narcissists than men it's a it's a it's a um let me tell you why women are more likely to use man psychological manipulative or emotional manipulative tactics than men because women on, on average can't beat men since they can't run up on a man and make a man do what she wants him to do, she has to find an alternative way. She has to find alphabet soup. She has to find word salad. She has to find sex. She has to find an alternative way to get the man to do what she wants to do. Whereas men, we're more dominant. We're more domineering. We're more intimidating. So when we say something, women women and children they pretty much do it because they are afraid of the possible backlash which generally is force so women are generally naturally more narcissistic than men there will be more women that are narcissistic than there will be men that are narcissistic so it's not a bad thing like it's a bad thing it is a thing that you must understand and recognize once you recognize those patterns, you really have to sit down there and get professional psychological help. Work together because it can be overcame. But if the individual is in denial, then no matter what you say, no matter what you do, they're going to always fight you. Because they don't want to admit, they don't want to accept the reality. The reality is there's a disorder lying within you. And with that disorder, it's actually causing us friction. Not that your behavior is causing us friction. Not that my behavior is causing us friction. You don't understand where whatever's inside of you is coming from. And since you don't know whatever's inside of you is coming from or what that is, you're having a difficulty controlling it, ringing, um, ringing it in. You need to bring that in, pipe that down, simmer that down, dead that, quiet that. When this issue arises, if money is the issue, you need to simmer down, pipe down, take some time, collect your thoughts, collect your feelings, collect the data. Let's collect the research so that whether or not how you feel, the data supports the feeling. The information supports how, what you think. If none of these things line up, then you might want to fall back right now and let the evidence speak for itself. Well, I disagree. Uh-huh, you do. So when we do your math, how does it work for everybody? When we do the math, how does that work for everybody? I'm not going to put my math in the equation. 
I'm going to do the math, which is universal, and then we're going to do your math, which is self-serving or one-sided. See, because people play narcissists, they pretty much play politically correct words. This is where you get all these anonyms and homophones and synonyms from. They are triggered by words. So you have to find the right word to convey your message so they're not attacked or they don't feel attacked. But remember, you're not attacking, but they feel like they're being attacked. So you have to find the right words in order for that individual male or female not to feel attacked. Because after all, what you're trying to do is fix it. After all, whatever it is that you're doing, you're trying to make it better. You're the one that signed up for the job. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. You're the one that says, Uncle Sam wants you. You're the one that volunteered. And since you volunteered, you must understand that landscape, the battlefield, so you can come out victorious. And if you get on that landscape or that battlefield and there is a divorce, there is a separation, there is a breakup, you will not come out victorious because that is not the mission. The mission is unity. The mission is togetherness. The mission is wealth building. That is the mission. And you cannot do these things as a collective if people don't understand what lies beneath the surface. There is something that lies beneath the surface and it can be fixed and it can be addressed and it can be managed. Just like with alcoholism, you can manage it one day at a time, but you must always be working towards it. That is your struggle. And the glory of working together as people is, is you do not have to do it alone. Somebody is here to help you. You do not have to do it alone. And one day, hopefully, the women will start to understand where the breakdown is coming from. Hopefully, one day, the men will be able to be in position to let her fall on them when they're scared, when they're vulnerable, when they're uncertain, when they're afraid. In their, <coughs> in their period of weakness, hopefully the men can do certain things in their lives so where the woman can fall back onto them until they can get on their feet without blowing up the spot. I went on for 24 minutes and some change. The reason why I explain these things, I try to explain these things in a certain way of detailing and, and dot connecting is because family we are at war. We're at war in the spirit world. We're at world war in the physical world. And we're losing because of fear. We're not losing because we don't know, simply because we don't know, because we can find out. We're not losing because um, we're being misunderstood. We're losing because of fear. And our people are afraid. And I, I want our people to understand where the fear is coming from and why it's there. It's the legitimate fear. The fear is real. And there are some people that that spirit energy picked for some people to help navigate that fear. What happens is, is the person with the fear, male or female, young or old, they turn away from that spirit energy because maybe they don't like the um, outcome or maybe that spirit energy isn't giving them the answer. Or maybe the individual, male or female, that that spirit energy put in front of them as their liaison, as their guide, as their aid, as their assistance, as their helper, that individual may still need some understanding and time and patience to get it right themselves. But the beauty of, of contracts and the beauty of um, covenants is none of those things speak of separate, separateness. None of them. They speak of togetherness. And you're supposed to work it out together. Well, when you hear some of these women on the internet and men, you're hearing separate. You're not hearing together. And these men and women 
They speak in a language that makes a person who's afraid believe the grass is greener, feel as though the grass is greener. And let me be clear. Not every man wants to be with another woman. Not every woman wants to be with another man. We're talking heterosexual relationships. Sometimes they're so overwhelmed with fear that they would fear that they would rather be alone for the rest of their lives. Verse one, going back and mending what is broken or moving forward and starting anew. This is, this is what I'm explaining. When you hear a female say those words that this female said, I don't judge a man by his money. That is a true statement. It's not an absolute statement. It's a true statement. She doesn't. But it's a period of time. It's a matter of time before she says, I work too much. I work too long. All this stress is on me. All you're doing is blah, 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 blah. She's going to turn on you. Not solely because she's a narcissist, but primarily because the road is too rough. Life is too long. A young female can say that, sure. She's bright-eyed, she's bushy, she's bright-eyed and she's bushy-tailed, and she's ready for the world. But when that woman gets to a certain number on her timeline, she's going to say, this is exhausting. I want you out. And then she's going to look for a male that's not necessarily going to be leader, but a male that can be damn near close. That is the key. So why wait until all the drama and all the tragedy happens? Why not change it in the very, very beginning? Understand how I'm trying to lay this out for you. They do not, they really don't care about penis size and they really don't care about money. They really don't. But you as a male, you have to care about money. Because you cannot provide for her, you cannot protect her, you cannot make her happy, you cannot do a lot of things that a man is supposed to do, not even a man as in gender, not even a man as an adult. I'm speaking on the term of man as in partner. You can't do certain things that you are required and responsible for doing if you don't bring certain things to the table. That's leadership quality, that's competency, that's desire. That's the that's 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 want. There are certain things you got to bring to the table in order to show her or put her in a position that she doesn't have to do it on her own. And we as men, I'm telling you, the men, we as men, we're going to have to fight that white boy. You can dance around it as much as you want to, but you can't. If your woman is afraid of you. Imagine how she feels afraid of the man you're afraid of. Or not necessarily man, but the, the object you're afraid of. If she's afraid of you and you are afraid of something, imagine how she's going to react to that thing that you are afraid of. This is why you got to face that white boy. And the best way to face that white boy is head on. What come what may. Let what come may. You have to face him. And by facing him, you become better, stronger, wiser, smarter, faster, more patient, more low-key, more quieter. You become a better lover. You be and I don't mean well, it translates to sex in the bed, but it's not sex in the bed. It's your women feel safe. Your children feel safe. Your children will call you up and want to hold conversations with you, even though they're out there living in the world themselves. They'll call you up and ask you for your advice. Your children will call you up and ask you, do y'all need anything? Everybody good? And they want to pour back into the house in which they came from. If y'all need something, say something. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can to help. You can acquire all those things only if you're willing to fight that white boy. If you are afraid, if you want to skirt away, if you want to hide beneath the rug, then everybody's going to look at you cower out. And when they look at you cower out, it's not that they're going to cower out, but then you can't have that position that you claim that you have. 
because you're supposed to stand up and face this head on. I don't ever speak about a man. Look, I'm a man and I'm in the world of men and men shame other men. I don't care for men shaming other men. That's not my lane. There's a guy at my job. He's a little bit emotional and I understand it. Men are dealing with so much pain on a regular basis from people keep using them as a punching bag. And they just keep going on and on and on and on because in their mind, you're built for it. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care how it makes you feel. They don't care if it's right to lay it at your feet. All they know is you the right one, baby. And they're going to keep giving it to you. And I see men break down. I see men, men, men lose their minds. I see men go postal. I'm telling you guys these things so that you can better understand. When a female says she doesn't care about his money, that is a true statement. But it's not an absolute statement. Eventually, she will double back and say, you need to do more. And she's talking about bring more money to the table. The reason why she's telling you, I don't care about your money, is only to bring you in closer. You come in closer. That also allows her leadership and control over you. But then in that eighth year, in that fifth year, in that third year, she's going to start to punish you for not having some money. She may not kick you out. She may not put a foot up your ass, but the behavior will change. The sentiment will change. Not only will she punish you, the rest of us men will punish you. Warrior class, zoo, rise up. Warrior class, zoo, speak up. Warrior class, zoo, show up. Warrior class, zoo, smoke them out. Peace, blessings, and black love. I'm out. In this campaign, we are coming to get our check. Death is better than bondage. Fair Use Act Disclaimer This site is for educational purposes only. Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976 Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research.